measurements, and you'll bend it over to let the water out, and you'll fill up this little cap. When you do that, it's very important that the water in here does not go back in the system. So if somebody's system catches pythium, and you're constantly putting this back in the system, it's going to get around. It's going to run really fast. So it's really good at swimming. So every university has lab courses and courses where they teach students and have students learn hands-on, like with chemistry and biology and things like that. But when it comes to agriculture, there are only a few universities have it, okay, where you actually have on-site, there's a whole bunch of things happening that are agricultural, plant sciences, or whatever. Some universities have the resources to actually do this. You know, we have a greenhouse here. You go to other, you get to the university over in Sacramento, they don't have a greenhouse. How are they going to do this? They don't have the facilities, and they're not designed to have the facilities. We have the facilities because we do research, we do work for growers, and so everything is kind of here. So, in the United States, there may be maybe as many as 20 universities that have this kind of facility set. Okay. Cornell, where Neil is from, is one of those. Okay, we're one of those. Invariably, they will be doing science at both the very basic level, but also at the very applied level. So we cover the entire continuum of the sciences from basic to applied. And so for us here, this particular college, the College of Ag and Environmental Sciences, we're very applied. But we are always looking for causes. We're looking for things at all levels, from biochemical to ecological, you know, everywhere in, in the spectrum. And then, of course, we train all across the board. And the next generation of scientists that are going to be doing this kind of research, they're being trained at these institutions that have this facility. And at the undergraduate level, you know, I, I train people specifically to be able to go to work in the industry. The future of hydroponics is really promising in the U.S. We've been seeing increased consumer interest in locally grown food instead of importing it from other countries or shipping it across country like 3,000 miles to get to the consumer. So uh, we're seeing an increase in greenhouse production of hydroponic vegetables. And when we look at the statistics from the U.S. government, we found that um, between 2007 and 2012, when we have the last USDA census of agriculture, that um, in New York State, where I'm from, there was a 54% increase in that area. So we have double-digit increase every year for greenhouse vegetable production. I get many phone calls a week from employers that are looking for students that can be the growers in, the, in their hydroponic operations. Um, and so right now I think there's more jobs out there than there are students to fill the jobs. So it's definitely an area where we need more education and more training. Um, and students are really interested in this area too. So I think it's going to be a strong future. There's a lot of technology that's, that's happening right now as well. So like more energy efficient greenhouse production, um, LED lighting, cogeneration, so generating heat and electricity at the same time, um, CO2 enrichment of the greenhouse, and then all the different hydroponic systems and the control that you have in the hydroponic systems. So it's an exciting time for hydroponics.